The not-so-unique story of Uniqlo. In 1949, textiles manufacturer Hitoshi Yanai founded a business and had a son. Today, his son has built up what started as a textiles company into a global clothing brand with over a thousand stores worldwide. This is the story of Uniqlo and its not-so-unique rise to success. Tadashi Yanai was born in 1949 in the city of Ube, in Yamaguchi, Japan, the same year his father founded a textiles company by the name of Ogori Shoji. The family would go on to own a menswear retailer, though it would not expand past its one location in Ube. Following World War II, life in Japan was extremely difficult, a far cry from the state of art tech haven that it is today. Post-war Japan was riddled with political and economical unrest and starting an expansion a business was something much easier said than done. Still, in 1984, having spent his life watching his father tend to the menswear shop, Tadashi had a dream. He was going to build an empire. He just had to figure out how. Tadashi had his first start in business in 1971, at the age of 22, when he began selling men's clothes and kitchenware at a Jusku supermarket. After just a year at Jusku, Tadashi set his sights on something with a little more growing potential than a job at a supermarket. His father's roadside clothing shop, he wasn't disheartened by his short stint at the supermarket. Bolstered by his strong belief in not taking failures too seriously and always believing that the next venture would be successful. So quitting his job and going to work under his father, Tadashi began planning his next move. Tadashi was a long-standing admirer of the work of Peter Drucker, an American management consultant, whose writings and teachings as whole are credited to have contributed a great deal to the philosophical and practical foundation of today's business corporations. Through Peter's work, Tadashi learned about the importance of thinking about customers' interests first, selling what customers wanted to buy over what the company wanted to sell. With this in mind, Tadashi would take over the family business and majorly rebrand. In 1984, with shelves lined with both menswear and women's clothing, Tadashi opened the door to unique clothing warehouse in Fukurumashi, located in Nakaku, the heart of Hiroshima, Japan. The brand saw quick success, opening up several more outlets in its early years. Tadashi later intended to shorten the lengthy brand name to contractions of the word unique and clothing from the original name of the shop. However, four years later, in 1988, while going through administration work for registering the brand in Hong Kong, the staff member in charge of the registration process misread the C in clothing as a Q, birthing the trademark Uniqlo name. Being quite fond of the new name, Tadashi had all existing unique clothing warehouse stores names across Japan changed to Uniqlo. Shortly after, in 1991, Uniqlo's parent company, the original menswear shop operated by Tadashi's father, was also renamed, taking on the name Fast Retailing. In the beginning of the 1990s, Japan was struck by a recession so bad it is known as Japan's lost decade. However, in a period of economic stagnation for the rest of the country, Uniqlo found success unlike any other. The recession meant that consumers didn't have as much money to spend on items like clothing. And sticking by his commitment to putting the consumer's desires first, Tadashi made an unprecedented move for a Japanese company. He moved all production to China. Factories in China operated on cheaper labor than those in Japan. And this daring move would allow Tadashi to slash production costs, allowing Uniqlo to fulfill the growing demand for affordable products. By 1994, three years into the recession and just 10 years after Tadashi had taken over his father's store, Uniqlo was operating 100 outlets across Japan. Tadashi's fascination with American commercialism hadn't ended either. Intent on learning from his Western peers and predecessors in this time of great success for Uniqlo, Tadashi set his sights on Mickey Drexer, the president of The Gap, an American clothing retailer. The Gap had been rapidly expanding through the United States since its founding in 1969, and Tadashi wanted to know all the secrets to their success, so he sought out Mickey aiming to learn as much as he could from the Americans and implement it in Uniqlo. What Tadashi would end up taking from The Gap would be their speciality store of private label apparel or spa strategy. Implementing the strategy meant that Uniqlo would have to produce their own clothing and sell it exclusively. In order to help realize this, the company contracted retail brand consultants who would guide them through the entire process, as well as consult a new logo, store design and merchandising, among other things. Tadashi went as far as to adopt the advertising model of The Gap, 
producing commercials inspired by the American company for Uniqlo, featuring celebrities dancing around in Uniqlo clothing. The advertising campaign, paired with the new retail layouts and the good quality of Uniqlo clothing, despite low prices, would lead to further success for the brand. By 2001, profits reached a new peak for Uniqlo, and the company boasted over 500 retail stores across the country. The following year, they would open the first international Uniqlo in Shanghai, China, along with four stores in London, England. 2005 would see more international expansion, spanning from New York City to Seoul, in addition to the estimated 700 locations that the company operated in Japan. By 2006, Uniqlo hit $4 billion in sales, topping that with their $10 billion global sales goal for 2007, which put them in the top 5 global retailers, along with The Gap. In 2009, Fast Retailing announced that the company was targeted to make an annual $61.2 billion in sales by 2020, making them the world's biggest specialty retailer of private label apparel with a continuous growth rate of 20% per year. Today, Uniqlo boasts over a thousand stores across the globe, but what sets them apart from other clothing retailers of their size is their philosophy when it comes to their clothing. Though it is largely considered to be a fast fashion brand, Uniqlo has always gone against this assumption, with their dedication to creating simple and essential pieces that aim for excellence in the fields of quality and design. The company believes that everyone can benefit from simple, well-designed clothing, and that looking and feeling better can lead to the world being a little better. Though the company operates on a model similar to a traditional fast fashion brand, think H&M or Forever 21, Uniqlo's focus on basics is what helps set it apart. By creating timeless pieces that people will always need. Uniqlo's clothing doesn't fall out of fashion nearly as quickly as the high pieces of other fast fashion brands. Additionally, the quality of the clothing is something that has been emphasized by the company and loaded by customers for the brand's entire history. Uniqlo clothing is made to last its wearer past the single season pieces of other high street brands, but they are made to do so without breaking the bank. While it has to be said that the company is strictly speaking a fast fashion brand, Uniqlo is marginally ahead of its peers through its long wearing clothing that stays in style longer and the company's commitment to actually meeting its sustainability goals. However, that doesn't mean that the brand is free of controversies. Having received a number of reports regarding poor workers' condition, primarily in their Chinese factories, alleging that conditions in the Chinese and the Cambodian factories were dangerous and oppressive, among other items. Additionally, during the initial outbreak of conflict in Ukraine following the Russian invasion, fast retailing chose to continue operation within the Russian market despite numerous other retailers across various sectors pulling out. However, by early March, following serious backlash, the company announced that they had decided to seize all Russian operations. Despite some less than stellar PR brought about their response to the Russian invasion, Uniqlo has continued to preserve as a clothing powerhouse across the globe, even launching a sustainable clothing brand called Lifewear under Uniqlo. The company continues to draw in consumers with their clothing, spicing up the selection of basics and staples with collaborations from artists such as Cows and designers like Alexander Wang, to games like Final Fantasy and even whole franchises like Star Wars, to produce exclusive lines of clothing that keeps customers coming back. While Uniqlo might not be as unique as Tadashi and I set out to be, it's consistent. Quality products paired with well-studied methods of its American predecessors have built up into a billion-dollar clothing empire that continues to expand across the globe. Whether it's fast fashion, everyday staples, or limited edition exclusive merch lines with the biggest franchises, Uniqlo has it all, anywhere around the world.